So there have been quite a few videos recently on YouTube with different people trying to beat the Beth Harmon bot on chess.com. So I figure why not get my hat in the ring, but I'm not going to be doing it the same way that everybody else has been doing it. I am going to try to beat Beth Harmon with the worst opening in all of chess. I am going to try to take her down with the Jerome Gambit, which is actually something I've been trying to do against engines for quite a while. If you're new to the channel, I actually have somewhat of a history. This is my 10th video of me trying to beat uh, computer engines with dubious openings. Beth is actually going to be the weakest engine that I've played. She's coming in at 2,700. I've beaten Stockfish with quite a few different dubious, horrible openings. So if you're into that kind of stuff, maybe subscribe to the channel. Maybe check it out. There's a whole playlist. I'll leave it in the link below, as well as a link to the Beth Harmon bot if you're interested in taking her on as well. So I'm over here on chess.com, and as you can see, they actually have quite a few bots. It starts at a basic level. It goes all the way up through Master before you run into Beth Harmon. This is the bot that we are going to be playing against today. And then they even have quite a few celebrity bots. So I'm actually going to dip out of the frame just to give you guys a little bit of a better look at all of the celebrities. If you're familiar with a lot of the Chess.com crew, this might be a fun way for, for you to participate and play against some of these players. But I'm going to be focused on Beth, and there's seven different levels. She starts at age 8 at only 800 rated, but that rating goes up very quickly as she ages. I have to admit, I haven't seen the show to know if this is accurate. It's something I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to check out the Netflix show. My apologies, Beth. I just haven't gotten to it yet. I swear I will. And we're going to play on challenge mode. No help of any kind. This is the way chess was meant to be played. Chess is a battle of the minds. It's me versus you. Nobody should need to get any additional help during the game. Me versus Beth. Let's create a masterpiece together. And Beth is actually saying that she's analyzed these on the ceiling since she was eight years old. And I actually want to take this time to be incredibly transparent. I'm not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes here. I have prepared for this battle. As long as I can get a Gioco piano on the board, I am pretty confident that I'm going to be able to win this line no matter what Beth plays. So as soon as we get the Jerome on the board, I've done a little work, I've done my homework, I am ready to battle. So I'm not too worried about what is going to take place here. And I just wanna make that very clear. Uh, so we get the Gioco piano and that gives us the opportunity to go straight in for the Jerome Gambit. This check doesn't concern her, and probably rightfully so. This is like the worst opening that you can play in all of chess. Giving up two pieces, we're going to win one back, no matter what line black plays. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of different moves that black can go for. We're going to win one of the pieces back. King to f8 is one of the kind of obnoxiously solid ways for black to play, but a very good choice by Beth. So here I'm going to go back, and in this line... The, the best plan that I've come up with so far is to early on play for c3 and d4. Um, this will kind of just kick the bishop away. And I, this looks like one of the kinds of positions where I'm going to create the shrine pawn structure. Maybe it looks like a mountain to you. I'm just saying I'm down a piece, but I got this solid wall in front of me. And I'm going to pray at the shrine in my little temple that I can somehow hold this position together, because really it shouldn't work, but uh, maybe if we get lucky, maybe if we're prepared for this battle, she will hopefully overextend. So I'm just going to play kind of some sensible moves, get castle, develop my pieces, and hope that she overextends on the king side. She actually has this tendency against the Jerome Gambit to, uh, to go kind of wild on the king side. That's what we were looking forward to, because now I'm going to play the move pawn to f4, trying to get some sort of an attack. And here I actually don't mind sacrificing the exchange, so knight to d2. Uh, I'll give up this rook. As long as I get a massive attack, I am trying to either open the f-file, or if she shuts it down, uh, I'm trying to play aggressively in the center. Here I have achieved connect four. Uh, that is a wonderful start. Um, instead of taking the knight right away, I'm gonna play knight to c4. And if the bishop retreats, I think now I will take this knight. And um, perhaps the 
I should be winning now. The coolest way has got to be in this position. Uh, this looks very familiar. What about knight to e5? I am trying to get connect five here. So five in a row. What could be stronger than that? This looks like I'm going to get some pretty massive attacking chances here. At some point, I'm going to be able to play e6. I'm going to start with queen to h4. And if, uh, if she does play this sort of normal looking move, I think she's busted after pawn to e6. Here, I should have an attack. Let's just make sure we, uh, we don't blow this one here. Uh, I'm going to go all the way back. And if she's forced to come up, c4 is what I think should be winning in this position. Uh, the king is running around, so there should just be a mate around the corner. I guess I'll just keep checking. <laughs> and let's see if we can get there. This looks promising. This looks very, very promising indeed. So, yeah, looks like we're going to get there. Boom! Yeah, so that's how you do it. Subscribe!